Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 283 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. <laughs> I'm going to either say my name is Drowned or my name is Barbara still, because this is going to be a week after the race. So That's I'm just saying my name is Barbara. Yeah, let's be positive here. <laughs> okay. So Barbara. it's obvious Barbara and I have been talking about this race for the future, 9.0. Yep. Seems like we've been talking about it for many, many months and even though we actually haven't done it yet, because we're recording on a Friday, this episode, by the time you hear it, yes. we will have been done with the triathlon, and we will all have won gold medals, and we would have all survived. Right. <laughs> yeah. You say that so confidently. Yeah, I do. We. <laughs> the nice thing is, is the weather. Oh, my God. It's going to be 70. Yeah, that's like perfect. Wait triathlon weather well the in lake michigan's like 67 it's cold oh physical weather is good but the lake is some kind of cold that's the coldest it's been since i've been doing this race seriously because that's weird this whole area we've been in this massive heat wave for months where we're topping 100 degrees it's not warming up that it water was 96 monday and when we race sunday it's 70 so i don't know it's just my luck your luck. I don't know, but it's a good thing. Are you wetsuiting it or still no? No, I'm, I am I. don't train in a wetsuit, so I'm not racing in one. But I'll be honest with you, that swim really just gets in my head. I'm, I'm super, I'm really prepared, but I'm really nervous and I get sure. really jacked up, you know, where it's before the race right now. So all of those that are around me for the next two days <laughs> are going to get a little taste of the bard that's a competitor. I get really sweet. Oh, I, yeah, okay. A little bit nervous, very duly focused. Noted. Yeah, duly noted. So if you Everyone see me. Everyone keep your distance. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to die. I've been training really hard, and I have a, a goal in my brain to just do well. So, And I know you do, too, and you've got a great partner's. I saw Mark and Bobby's posts on Facebook. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah, they're turning it into a whole hangout weekend. Yeah, yeah good for them. You did really good raising money. I really want to congratulate you and your teams. You did really, really good. I'm super proud of you. And everybody that donated to us and to the race, anybody listening, i just like to say thank you. But you guys really did well. I'm super happy for you. And that's what it's all about. Yep. We come on here and we talk about the actual activity we about the weather or the or, <laughs> or the training or the training yeah. or we joke about dying in the water all of that it doesn't matter it's all about raising money for the yep. foundation Bingo. which is honestly just a great way to increase our education and our industry and that's what it's all about i wouldn't be doing it for without it so you know let's go us yes so to segue just a quick reminder that our show will be recording at the DTG Symposium. It's a fantastic collection of speakers from around the world. We will be in All Slip. All Slip. Yep. All Sip. I think so. We're going to all sip some Fireball. <laughs> all Sip, <laughs> Illinois, September 15th to 16th at the GC America facility. A couple of weeks ago, we had the creator of the DTG and a few speakers on that talk about the event. Unfortunately, of course, I wasn't there. But if you are looking for some top-notch, hands-on education, head over to dtgevents.com to see the lineup and to register. Also, you don't have to be a DTG member to enjoy this amazing show. But if you do go, please stop by and talk to Elvis and I. Sit down, chat. We'd love you on the podcast. It's going to be a great show. They have I'm a like, killer I'm lineup. I'm super, super stoked. So this week, we talked to a Kiwi that is in the design business. A Kiwi? I found out that that is the name of people from New Zealand. Huh. Yeah. You found out because I wasn't there. I was probably working. Yes. I'm really sorry. He called himself that, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are many places that labs use that will do most design work for you. But one of the companies is Evident. Evident's been around for 15 years. 
so they have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Joining the podcast is Guy Menzies. I love the name Guy. It's a good name. My son's girlfriend, her dad's name's Guy. Sorry, just keep going. That's a lot of guys. (laughs) Joining the podcast is Guy Menzies, the vice president of design. Guy comes on to talk about all the things that Evident does, from lab management software that started the whole company to their 350 designers that are working 24 hours a day to help with your lab's production. That's a lot of effing designers, Elvis. 350. We also get into how they train and scale so many of these technicians, how they can cater to your lab's preferences, the exciting new way for ExoCAD users to send directly to them, directly from the software, Nice. and some interesting trends that only a company of this size and global footprint can see. So join us as we chat with Guy Menzies. What's the worst part about getting into digital and dentistry? That's not having the support that you need. And did you know that Ivoclar has digital equipment sales specialists? These experienced professionals, now these are people that have been doing this for a while. They're here to help make your transition to digital a smooth one. Don't waste your time with anyone else. They help provide customized solutions analyze your ROI, provide hands-on assistance, and localize support. All of this catered to your needs. Let's be honest, when we're into digital, most of us have a lot of needs. Contact a digital equipment sales specialist today by emailing digitalspecialist at ivaclar.com. Tell them you heard it here on the podcast and always Iva Clark we appreciate your support voices from the bench the interview so we have the extreme pleasure today to talk to somebody who's the VP at evident guy Menzies welcome to the podcast how are you sir I'm doing well, thanks, Elvis. Thanks so much for having me. It's a, it's a privilege to be here. I've watched the show for a long time now, so it's uh, it's good to finally be on it. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So happy to finally have Evident on. I mean, it's not like y'all are small in our industry. You have quite the big footprint, and I'm surprised it took five years to get somebody on. <laughs> yeah, it has taken a while. It has taken a while. But yeah, lot, lots uh, lots going on in those five years, and the company's grown a lot, so it's, uh, it's good to connect up with you. So... Tell me a little bit about Evident for the listeners that aren't quite familiar what the company does. Because I know you're in a lot of different aspects of of dentistry, not just design, not just software, but a whole lot's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good question because there is sometimes a bit of confusion out there. And and it is a question we get quite a bit, like, what is Evident? And the best way to sort of look at Evident is that we're a CAD design center and a workflow automation company. So... We essentially, uh, the entry point for a lot of our customers now is, is CAD design, mm-hmm. um, but we have, we have teams of uh, account managers and specialists that we sort of build around our partners and particularly laboratories for our audience today that they work with our, our partners to understand their, their needs, their workflow and any potential problems that they're having with those. And then they work to automate that workflow around uh, or end to end is particularly around uh, CAD designs as well. So that'd be the best way to look at us. Uh, but then there are other bits and pieces that we do, right? We, we have our you know, lab management software, which is uh, where we started as a company 15 years ago. Um, we have a very loyal customer base as well. Uh, and then we are also into a bit of reselling as well. So resell Meta, Exacad, and now Shining 3D scanners as well to help digitize the industry. So, oh, nice. Yeah, there is a, a few different elements to evident. But uh, yeah, CAD Design Center and Workflow Automation Company is the best way to look at it. So it actually started as the lab management software. Yeah, yeah, about 15 years ago. 15 years ago, wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, I joined up with evident about seven years ago. Uh, when our CEO, Paolo, had uh, recently acquired the business. And, yeah, we started out a pretty small company back then. We were really uh, working. I worked a lot closely with our labs and particularly setting up their, their lab management software, setting up their their workflows and every 
basically setting up so they can get all the data out of the system that they need to run their business. Uh, and then since then, we, we opened up the CAD Design Center and, uh, and sort of just kept moving down that workflow more to automate it. And we've gone from having a handful of uh, staff up to about 400 now, so over the last seven years. 400 mm. people work for Evident? Yeah, yeah. So wow. about 350 of those uh, are technicians now as well, designing. So it's grown rapidly, and a lot of that growth has come from about 2020 when uh, COVID hit, when the big digitization oh, yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, everybody needed somebody to do the work. <laughs> exactly. They couldn't get anyone in the lab, and then you know, everyone was going digital, which added a whole lot of problems, you know, for, for the laboratories, and uh, yeah, it really exploded uh, from there on, which has been it's been a good ride. So where do you come from, Guy? Did, did you have a lab background? No, not at all, actually. So... I, I'm from New Zealand. Um, it's where, where I was born and raised. And I was going to say, you don't sound Canadian. No, nah, definitely not Canadian. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I essentially went to university for sport and recreation management. And I came out of university around 2008, I think it was. And uh, a couple of years later, I ended up moving over to England, um, as a lot, of, a lot of Kiwis do. And I, I got into telecommunications and then basically... Um, my time there came to an end and I moved over to Canada and linked up with uh, Evident. And uh, yeah, that's where I started out um, as essentially sales and support staff member for our lab management software. And so it's where I learned a lot about the industry. You know, if you want to crash course in running a laboratory, it's uh, a good way to do that is setting up a lab management software and uh, understanding all the different elements that need to go into that. So that's really how I got got my experience uh in the industry and you came into evident with zero dental background zero dental background yeah absolutely i, I uh the lab world i would if i don't like admitting it but i barely knew it existed um like you, hear, you, yeah, sure. say it. you, know, you see that you see the front front side as a consumer uh the clinicians but yeah it was a big eye-opener and you know I've, I've loved it ever since but for me what what makes me just want to stay here and keep working in the industry is the people right like we yeah. have the lab people, some awesome people. We've got great customers, and and it's just a lot of fun when we get out there and get on the road and go visit them or get down to the trade shows. You know, you can't you can't beat beat those trips. So oh, absolutely, fun. yeah. So you came to Evident, and your goal was to get labs onboarded with Evident's lab management software. Yep, that that's how I started out. How do you sell a lab management software? to a lab when you know nothing about what a lab does <laughs> yeah so that's <laughs> that's where the crash course came in so the first my onboarding was really heavily around going down and visiting labs that we work with so i actually mm -hmm. spent the first month of my career at evident down at a lab um, yeah. to understand it so that was an eye-opener as i mentioned i like to think i'm a quick learner <laughs> some people might say i'm not but uh <laughs> yeah essentially you know but then had to learn on the job, you know. That sure. It just, uh, it's, it's changed a lot since then, right? Early days, it was all about PFMs and so on, and I was all moved through to Zaconia and so on, and a lot's changed. But luckily, um, I managed to learn pretty quickly and, and yeah. understand essentially the problems that they're facing, right? And then how we can provide solutions around those with uh, what we offer in our LMS software. So, yeah, it's been a good journey. Yeah. So what is the lab management software from Evident? What exactly is it? Because maybe some of our listeners don't understand what yeah. management software is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. So it's an ERP system, essentially. Um, and that doesn't so... make it any easier to understand. If you know, <laughs> ER, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so I guess the best way to look at it is it, it helps the laboratory manage their entire operation. So from when a case comes in, uh, you book it into the system that will pull through the prescription uh, it was scheduled around the lab and you can track technician productivity and, and track where the case is in the laboratory, track who did what, track internal remakes. Uh, then you move it through to the invoicing and billing. And then uh, we also have obviously the sales reporting, production reporting, inventory control. Uh, and then it's also directly linked up with our uh, CAD design center. So people are it's using it a lot for storage as well. And then you can send your files directly to us for design. Oh, from the software. Nice. From the software. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then they essentially connect up with their own CAD design team uh, at Evident. And I've imagined that as the industry is involved, so has the software. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you have to always have an evolve it. It's, it's definitely an ever evolving piece of software and it's a cloud-based software, you know, which does make that 
a little bit easier from, from our side as well. So always a work in progress. Sure. So what are you doing for Evident now? Yeah, so my role now is uh, Vice President of Designs. And so basically what, what that encompasses is managing the, the design side of our business. So I've moved on a little bit from uh, the LMS software and I've worked across every different role within our company over the last seven years. But yeah. now I'm on the design, which is our fastest growing part of our business. So best way to sort of look at it is that I run all the customer facing um, team and, and are accountable for you know the overall uh, success of, of that part of our business. Can you design? I cannot design, so I'm not a designer. Uh, I, I can do the basics, but I am not a technician. So if you ask me to design, you wouldn't want to put that in your mouth. <laughs> That's funny. I imagine you started with just single crowns when Evidence started and kind of worked your way up through all the other restorations. Uh, so, yeah, we started with Crown and Bridge, definitely not single crowns. Um, how we started out was... We worked closely with our, uh, worked closely with a couple of partners, and a lot of it was small design cases, those larger really wax oh. ups. Um, yeah. And so we started out working just for a handful of labs, and you know we actually released it exclusive to labs on our on our platform first, and then mm-hmm. you know we've got to thank them for their support. They always help us launch new products and help us test uh, new ideas that we have, and essentially that started to take off. We did a lot of crown and bridge cases, then moved into implants. Uh, and then on oh, night guards as well. But then um, since since COVID, you know, we're starting to now do RPDs, dentures, uh, aligners, uh, and everything in between. So we're now a full service CAD design center. So definitely started out with Crown and Bridge, which is the engine of the uh, industry, but uh, now a full service design center. And you say you have about 350 designers? Yeah, 350 designers across six locations uh, in the Philippines. So our CAD Design Center is based in the Philippines. So they're all evident staff and uh, it's basically uh, it's headquartered out of Manila. Have you ever been over there? I have um, not. Have you? Yeah, I have. I actually got away about this time last year and it's it's an awesome place. you know. Yeah, I bet. The size and scale of Manila is, is pretty hectic uh, when you come from a small country like New Zealand, but uh, it's a beautiful country and, and great people as well. So. so how do you go about finding technicians in other countries and training them? Yeah, so this is a good question. So when we started out, obviously, well, how do we go about finding them? We have obviously our own um, HR team, mm-hmm. uh, which go and recruit technicians, but there are a lot of dental tech, uh, tech schools uh, in the Philippines. Are there really? Wow. Yeah, there are. So we've got a lot of connections with them. As they come out of school, um, we provide careers for them and give them a clear career path and, and really try to set them up for, for the success and support their family. But obviously, when you get to about 350 technicians, we're not just hiring technicians. So uh, we have our own training school as well. So we have a one-month onboarding process that our, our trainers walk our new staff through before they go on the floor. Uh, and uh, that's essentially how we ensure that we get uh, the right people out there on the floor to support our customers. But for a whole month, they have to train? Yeah, we, we put them through a whole month until we put them on the, on the floor so that we can ensure the quality is where we need it to be for our customers. That's amazing. Usually here, day one, they're on the bench <laughs> working. And somebody yeah. walks by and says, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what, you know what the design industry is, right? Is like right, you know what? Uh, what might look good to me might not look good to you, and so, you know, for us to go put put a, uh, a te- new technician on, on one of our teams or a, or a new client, we want to make sure that they've got a good understanding of of everything that that lab's looking for, and and that's how we sort of ensure that. Yeah, but you you brought up a good point. How do you handle doing designs at that scale when, like you mentioned, one design might be good for them but not so good for the other? Yeah, so that's a really good question because it's. That's got to be as hard. <laughs> it's difficult. And we have professionals to help us do that. But to break it down, essentially, you know, how we've sort of solved this problem is that whenever you join Evident, the first step in doing that is filling in what we call our, your design preferences or building your design profile. Okay. And our account managers work closely to sort of understand that and decode your sort of identity. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we also ask our, our customers, what do they look for in technicians and what does their sort of onboarding process look like? And really what's the five aspects of a crown say they look at or is, is key to their identity. And so we decode that in our onboarding process. And then 
we actually will uh, build a team of designers for that t- for that lab. So oh. you'll get the same designers every time you send a case up to evidence. You're really recruiting a team of, of technicians that actually work for your lab just within in our office in, in Manila. So it's really helped us control that consistency because you just feel like you've just got your own team and they chat through either through our portal or, or the or likes of WhatsApp. And we have weekly meetings, production meetings with a lot of our labs just to really feel like they're an extension of your business. So depending on how much work a lab sends to Evident depends on how big of a team they have? Exactly. So, you know, if you are just sending Crown and Bridge, say 40 units a day, typically we'll get one technician, you know, who'll be doing that case, uh, those cases for you. It does day. 40 a day? Yeah, let's say on average, um, 40 units a day. That's a, um, that's a good output. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you hear some people doing crazy numbers or a lot less than that, but that's a good average that um, that we sort of work off there. Yeah. And then depending on what you send, you know, if, if people bring in, if we bring in implant technicians, denture technicians, uh, we really build that team around them. So they'll they'll have the same designers each time. Do you usually have technicians that does the same type of restoration? Like one person does dentures, one person does night guards? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we find that's the best result um, and rather than making people switch and, and so on. So we have within the teams as specialists for each sort of design category. Do you have someone that does just like anterior? Yeah. So you do break it down to that, yeah. Yeah, so you'll have the more senior staff on, on the anterior, um, mm-hmm. more of our senior designers, and then junior staff will sort of start on those posterior uh, crowns as well and work their way through. Um, up, up, up there as, as we sort of have our continuous training program to upskill our technicians because as we see you know there's the industry's near, there's more demand for these uh, higher complex cases and essentially that's where we see a lot of people coming to us initially you know is for large smile design cases all on fours ditches rpds which um you know takes a little bit more of a skilled technician to get those yeah people. No, Mm -hmm. for sure. The posterior crown is becoming a a commodity if it isn't already, and it's a lot of the time and and efforts being put on the higher end stuff that needs help. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, A lot of talk about artificial intelligence in our industry. Is evident into that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, artificial intelligence is coming, and and it's coming pretty quick, right? Um, Yeah. And it's it's improving every day. So we actually have our own AI teams, and we do use it internally at the moment. We don't have an AI product, but we use AI to really automate our own internal systems and help make us uh, more efficient and do a bit of the legwork. So, yeah, AI is uh, definitely an interesting space and one that our viewers and listeners will We'll probably see some updates from us in, in the future. But you're not using any for cr- crown design now. So we do, uh, basically, we, it does a portion of our crown design. So portions of it, um, it'll actually do it. And then we can, we actually have our technicians finish those cases. Sure. On a handful. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to be uh, AI doing 80% of it. And then, you know, the 20%, the, the final touch being done by humans. Exactly, and that's that's one way that we can help keep our lab's identity, right? Um, sure. Everyone has their own little stamp or squiggly bit um, on the crowns, and by having a, a human finish that, um, that's one way that we can ensure that uh, before it goes back to the lab and ultimately the doctor and patient. Yeah, for sure. With removables becoming more and more digital, are you seeing an increase in all of that? Yeah, so removables have been growing uh like crazy the last little while so we launched our rpd uh, and dentures around june 2020 and they've been our, our fastest growing products uh-huh. ever since i actually did a webinar a month or so ago which showed showed those increases but over 100 percent growth like uh from 2020 uh and just continuing to grow particularly removable partial dentures that's one of our fastest growing really Interesting. yeah it's very growing very quickly but then we have partnerships for the lack of bertram deal lab where people will send us those parcels to design and then we'll send it directly to to bertram to fabricate and then sure. they'll drop ship to the lab and so that's a part of like helping our labs automate their workflow and tackle that uh labor shortage that that everyone's facing especially with partial design <laughs> yeah especially with partial design you know and then argon as well you know we've got a great connection with them with a with a design to manufacture workflow which uh, achieves the same 
same result and you know they're getting into partials now but we do a lot of work with them on crowns and, and implants for for our customers but generally what we're seeing is that people are starting to believe in in the uh the denture uh, the materials right the trust is building up people yeah. are now seeing the value in it uh they're seeing how much more efficient it's making them and and that's also being driven by a lot of these older removable technicians fading out of the labs right um sure. and they just don't have the people there anymore so we're seeing a big transition uh, for dentures, but then all on fours as well. All on fours, and a lot of this driven by indentureless patients, but all on fours are growing in pop- popularity. Uh, and then obviously a lot of people can spend a full day designing those, right? Which makes yep. them pretty inefficient when it comes to it, although they are high value products. But we can look at it two ways when people work with us on those all on fours. They can send it to us and we'll design it to completion and then they will just fabricate it. Or a lot of people might just send it to us to do a lot of the legwork, and then they'll just fin- put the finishing touches on it, right? That final 5% um, that they want so that they can actually increase their own efficiency. And, and then you have a technician in your lab that's instead of producing two arches a day, you know, you can go up to six, seven, uh, and so on. So when a lab sends you a file, it comes back, it's easily changeable or yeah. tweakable, maybe we should say. <laughs> yeah. so they can put their touch on it because we know how much technicians love to put their little touches in it <laughs> yeah they sure do absolutely so yeah and then so exacad who we're partnered with that that's absolutely possible and then it's possible with three shape as well so enables you to actually send us those cases and we'll send you back those files uh directly so you can upload them into your system uh and then make any tweaks that you want but then also that's where we partnered with Exacad uh, in February this year. Now we're we're seamlessly integrated into Exacad dongles all across, or Exacad dongles and dental share all across North America, where technicians and, and labs can just send um, cases to us directly from within dental share, and we'll send them back. So it really helps save them the time of exporting and importing, and helps to make them a bit more efficient on their end as well. So it just drops straight back into their Exacad. So ExoCAD used to, if they wanted to use your service, they would have to export out of ExoCAD, go to your website, and then upload it. Correct. Get it back and then bring it back into ExoCAD. But now, all from ExoCAD, click of a button, goes to you, comes right back, it's already in the system. Correct, yeah. So Nice. Yeah, nice. fully yeah. integrated. Yeah, it's um, Xcad's obviously an excellent software, and we're pretty excited to have partnered with them and be their preferred design center now. It's really helping our labs out as well because we see the Xcad grow. It used to be, you know, should I get Xcad, and now it's more just how many dongles do I need because a lot of labs yeah. got three shape and Xcad, which we I think is a great option, right? Because um, they've both got their own their own strengths. Um, no, we definitely hear about it more and more. Yeah, it's not one or the other. It's I got both. Yeah, got both now, isn't it? So yeah, it's uh, it's nice to see that labs is sort of opening up and uh, giving giving themselves some more options because both have got some pretty awesome tools. Well, what does Evident use to design? We use primarily Three Shape and Exacad. Okay. Uh, other two, but then we do have uh, some with us building teams and uh, for our partners and sort of helping them solve the problems that they're facing. You know, we can find ourselves using uh, a couple of these sort of bespoke softwares, you know, uh, DTX Studio and, and so on, just to help them sure. stay within that ecosystem that they're looking to do or get the results they're looking to achieve. But the quickest way to sum it up would be uh, Three Shape and Exacad. Do you use the same software that it's uploaded from? Is that what determines? Like if someone is using 3Shape, you design in 3Shape? Yeah, so our customers decide. So if they want us to design in 3Shape, we'll design in 3Shape. If they want us to design in Exacad, we'll design in Exacad. Because we're not looking to change people's workflows. We're really looking to fit into it and complement it. Yeah. And give them the results they need. Because if they want to design in Exacad, I mean, that's, that's a great result for them. And just makes it easier, uh, the overall workflow. The question is, does all 350 technicians know how to use both? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. So they're split. So we do have Exacad technicians and, and 3 shape. So now mm-hmm. we know why you have 350. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty awesome. They run 24 hours a day, six days a week. And 24 across, hours a day. Yeah, across three different shifts. And um, yeah, the majority of our work will get sent up around 5 o'clock in the afternoon depending on the time zone. Um, yeah. we are, we're a global company, right? So we're 
across US, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. So those come out throughout all out throughout the day. But um, so a lot of those will be designed overnight. So a lot of people kind of see us as their night shift. And so those cases are back there in the morning, ready to be milled. But then we also have the option to basically send cases at 10 a.m. and they'll be back by 12 or two to five hours of turnaround times as well. Yeah. Anybody from any labs in the Philippines use your service? Or is that no. just too close to home? <laughs> too close to home, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, I guess the pricing doesn't work too much for, for the Philippines. But yeah, we, we don't have uh, any customers there. But uh, I think the furthest we go south is my home country, New Zealand, and then out through the Middle East as well. So it's we're pretty lucky in the sense that we're a digital company, right? So there's really no no shipping of packages or anything like that, getting held up at customs. It's really enables us to expand our footprint pretty quick. Yeah, I guess you answered. One of my questions was, you, you guys don't produce anything. You don't manufacture anything. It's strictly a design software. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, it's strictly a design business. So we're, we're just designing all day, every day, so that our partners can fabricate in-house. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. fantastic. And that's why you worked with so many of these partners like Oregon or Bertram, who we know so well. Um, that's wonderful. You were talking about partials for a little bit, and I wanted to ask, what are you seeing people using these designs for? Are they printing wax and then still casting? Are you seeing a lot of metal printers? Or do you even know? Uh, so... Yeah, we do. When you sign up, we ask how, how you're actually planning on fabricating that because it has an impact. Uh, a lot of people are still, you know, casting. And so they're, they're printing out the frame. But then SLM is, is growing yeah. a lot, you know. Bertram, I think, is leading that way. You've got 3D RDP um, and others coming to that space. But then you've also, these metal printers, is the cost is coming down. So, you know, some of these bigger labs are starting to bring that in-house. And so... You know, SLM printing is is growing pretty quickly, and it definitely helps make that lab more the labs more efficient as well. And having partners to actually help our labs do that is is awesome, right? Because a lot of people, I'd say, RPDs is the most outsourced product from any lab, right? That and flexibles, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is, I yeah. guess, an RPD, I guess. Yeah, kind of. exactly. In a way, yeah. yeah. So they're all all getting out and uh, shipped out, and so. You know, be able to partner with guys like like Tim down there and, and provide those solutions for our labs. So it really just makes it one touch and then ship it out. It really uh really helps them or open up either what open up their product offerings and acquire more customers or really just uh, focus on what they say is their bread and butter, right? And mm-hmm. to get those to get out the door. So I notice I'm on social media a lot, there's no secret there, and I yep. see a lot of evident uh, webinars, Facebook videos uh what do you call them lab to lab i think yep how did that all get started yeah so the lab lab education series i was a part of that when it all got kicked off and it was all through the covid times you know just like everyone and then the door <laughs> shut, we were all like oh no what are we gonna do here and yeah you know i think we're still talking a bit about the today but our ceo parlo said you're not going to lay anyone off we're going to sit here and we're going to we're going to work really hard so that when the when the doors reopen you know we come out flying and how we worked really hard throughout that time was supporting our customers and a lot of that was just around education you know initially we're we're pretty lucky that Paolo, uh, our CEO, had been through a few recessions and had been through a few of these mishaps throughout his mm-hmm. career. And so he was able to shed some insight on what labs should be doing and, and then also just pulling in the likes of, you know, I remember Reed was one of our first uh, our guests on. Oh, the, was he? Yeah, Reed was one of the first guests on our webinar and just really having our labs and our partners share their experiences and, and what they're doing and really just building up that, that network of of support and that's what the lab industry or the general industry is sort of famous for right everyone's just helping each other out i think there's very few industries where neighboring labs are, are good friends for example or neighboring businesses are good friends when they're selling sure. the product. but you see that a lot in the, in the lab industry which makes it so special yeah what's nice is this education series that you do mm-hmm. didn't end a lot of people did this during covid but when they got busy and got back to work you didn't see them anymore <laughs> you're, you're still doing them. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're doing them every week. Oh, do you really do them every week? Well, the goal is every week. And so it doesn't always happen every week. But yet if, if we had the marketing guys on here, they would proudly tell you how many episodes we've done now. Sure, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure how many we've done. But yeah, pretty much every week um, for the last, what is it, three, three and a bit years now. So. Yeah. Yeah, we've learned a lot. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure your first podcast or what it looks like today. You know, you, you learn a lot, and you're thinking, "What were we doing that first?" Oh, time? it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We tell people all the time, if you go back, start at episode ten. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I remember our first one. Like we did, we didn't even really know what we we're doing, and we just had a Zoom call, like a conference call, and there were like thirty faces on the on the screen, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "This, this has got to be a better way." And we figured it out now, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great way of showcasing our, our partners, and then you know, announcing updates or, or new products or you know, new workflows that we're getting into as well. So it's uh, yeah, it's a really good series, and uh, still based around the education, right? Educating our audience, and yeah, and yeah, and you them. do it with video, which I applaud anyone that deals with video because I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time I got called in to host one. It was. It was it was a scary thought <laughs> all those years ago, but now it's just kind of a part of um, our day to day routine. You know, so yeah, you get used to it for an hour, and <laughs> yeah, and then it's, where are they? And well, they're hosting that webinar, so yeah, it's it's become a part of uh, the fabric of the company now. So it's good because it gives people a lot of exposure to public speaking, and then it also makes people feel a little bit more recognizable, right? Like your face is incredibly recognizable in the industry, right? Because you're out there on social media. So it sort of breaks down the barriers too for people and they feel like they know you. Yeah, and it's important to know, especially for a company like yours, which is so digital based and you just kind of send these files and then you get Mm. them back and you don't really know the people behind it. Yeah. I think it's important. Absolutely. And that's what we're always trying to do is build that human to human connection, right? Like at the end of the day, we're just a team of uh, a team of people here work, working as hard as we can to provide the best product we can. But, you know, because it is digital, people might can get into the uh, pretext that it's just a website doing that work for them. But that's why we really focus on building that team for you and then connecting them on video calls and, and building that human connection because it's it's important. So let's say we do send you designs and we're having issues. Do we talk to actual technicians? Do we talk to team leads? How, how is that handled? Yeah, so it's a good, uh, good question. So essentially uh, we have account managers, which are based out of here in North America, and a lot of them are technicians, RDTs, um, but then also – that just means that there's that would be you know we have to go through lines of communication things get lost in communication so we will connect you directly with your technicians so you can speak to the technicians designing those cases a lot of the time will be the team leader that comes but um at uh that way you can speak directly to your team oh wow yeah discuss any issues um or any changes that you want to do as well so it makes them be able to speak to the people actually doing it which uh Seems to get better results pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than three people away from the actual person doing the work. Exactly. And one thing that we've found the hard way over the years, right, is people have different definitions for a lot of different things. Oh, Um, sure. And and so if you just assume or if you don't spend the time to ask those questions, then something completely different comes out. Um, and they look at you like you're an idiot, but you know, you've got a lab in Australia is using the same term for something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have to really, uh, well, we have to make sure we understand that, but that's why not just taking a case and giving it to anyone that's free is so important. They, they, they know what you mean each time you put those notes in there because they've been doing that case hundreds or thousands of times. Sure. Mm. How many units do you guys design a day? Do you have that number? Are you even allowed to tell me? I'm not really allowed to tell it, but it's Understood. thousands and thousands. I one. bet. I bet. Cases. Yeah, I mean, you can do the maths, but there's there's a lot of a lot of units going. That's going insane. That system. Yeah, it is insane. And it's I'd love for you to come see our, our place in Manila once. It's it's crazy, right? Is uh, you know, you go into a laboratory, you're typically covered in zirconia dust pretty yeah. quickly. It's very loud and. You know, it's just your, your typical lab, but you go over and see the place in the, in the Philippines, and it's just hundreds of people sitting on their sitting on their computers, clicking away. So it's it's a lab, but it's very different, um, very quiet, and 
Yeah, it really shocks a lot of people when they come to visit it because I don't think many people have, well, they don't really think about it, right? What does it look like? And then when you see it, it's it's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, I figured it was just, you know, a, a computer and some dingy room in the basement or something you know and yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah it's actually it's on like the 30th floor of uh 30th floor of this place called bgc it's it's a beautiful office with beautiful view and um yeah definitely invite anyone that works with us to come see it it's uh it's a, it's a large-scale operation it's, it's pretty mind-blowing do you have the whole floor <laughs> yeah the whole floor <laughs> two floors actually so oh that's so cool. um yeah nice maybe someday who knows yeah, exactly. So I noticed you did Lab to Lab Education Series last month, and mm-hmm. you titled it the 2023 Trends to Help Scale Your Lab. Mm-hmm. Let's touch upon that. I'd love to maybe give some people some insight on what you talked about. Yeah, that's a good point. So basically, we basically have a, have a, a, a large set of data that we can use anonymously to present how basically one how we start out was how you could compare your lab to your partners basically um Mm -hmm. so you can see how labs do in the u.s and how they're doing in the uk and how they're doing in canada as our three uh main um, three main locations for our customer base but uh and then we sort of just talked about the trends and, and the trends that we're seeing in in products uh, that are moving through our moving through our design center. So yeah. where that really what it talked about, where we're seeing a lot of these trends is actually what we just touched on before. It's really going digital with that with your removables. Um, those are the RPDs and the dentures and all in fours are our fastest growing product. Um, and so we discussed basically why why is that trend and, and why is it happening which has been driven by that indentious population and then also that the trust in those materials um and going digital on that as well as the technician shortage right which is driving are you seeing a dip in crown and bridge or is that like plateaued and then everything else is growing or so crown and bridge is continuing to grow but not at the speeds that we see uh you know removables and so on yeah it is continuing to grow but not definitely not at the speeds of these removables Interesting. Uh, implants implants are growing a lot as well you know even just single units and so on and a lot of it's just because it's hard to find those technicians in, in their sure. lives right? um, and so they're looking for a partner like us that can help them with uh, the skill sets that you don't have in your laboratory are you seeing and maybe you don't know but fixed labs are they dipping into digital removable because of it being digital and you're seeing those kind of cases come through? It is starting to happen more and more. Uh, we are seeing that. People feel like they can get into it because, you know, it's digital. Um, and, and then you can rely on partners like us. Uh, and as long as you say you've got a 3D printer, you can actually do that. So we yeah. are seeing more fixed labs get into that space as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just going to grow in that direction. I mean, you already have ExoCAD. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I think if you're looking at labs that are closing down, it's a lot of those smaller, just removable labs, right, which clinicians have had, had relationships with, and then they close down and they have to look for other options. You know, it's, uh, if, you, if they haven't gone digital and you're looking for a digital option uh, and a lab offers that, you know, and they've got no option to to send to their their preferred partner anymore because they closed down it gives them an option to it sure for the clinician but then also the lab because they can rely on us to help them produce those cases yeah yeah absolutely what are some other trends that evident is seeing other trends so well you know like everyone's seeing at the moment is the intraoral scanning yeah um, we're seeing that's obviously blowing up heaps and a lot since COVID. But, you know, we're seeing labs now getting 70, 80% of their scans coming in. Sorry, what well, their impressions coming in via iOS. 70 uh, to 80? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. There's a few out there which have... Not in the Midwest. 100%, <laughs> yeah. But then the consolidation as well, right? Consolidation of dental labs, particularly in, in the USA and mm-hmm. Canada. Sorry, the USA, UK, and Canada. It's putting a bit of pressure on the industry, right? A lot of consolidation happening, a lot of people buying other labs, and then a lot of these small labs closing down. So the trends that we're typically seeing is that these labs are growing. growing they're growing pretty quickly as well, and it's just as many patients out there, but less labs. And so there's a lot of work being funneled into these larger consolidators, which is uh, an, interesting, an interesting part of a uh, stage, I guess, for the industry. Yeah, yeah I imagine... 
I don't know. As they consolidate, they need your service even more because of the combined work, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, the, as they consolidate more, they've, you know, they have they take on more work and they, they often will funnel it through one location. So maybe they can't fit more people into there and, and they're taking on that more work. So using someone like us, managers, allows you to use that space a little bit more. Yeah. Effectively, you can scale back your CAD department, right? Um, it's the easiest thing to outsource straight away is CAD design. So you can transition a CAD room into a, a, a CAM room, essentially. Um, yeah. and so that helps them produce more, right? Because at the end of the day, where, where labs are making their money is just on what they produce and what they ship out. So utilizing that space is, is so important to them, and uh, that's where we fit in. Yeah, I've been to a lot of labs where... Table space is limited. <laughs> it's limited, right? They're running very, out of space. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very limited. So, you know, some of the biggest labs we see is they have 20, 30 CAD technicians. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of, uh, it's a big room. Yeah. Um, and so if you reach that ceiling and you're faced with the uh, decision, what do I do? Do I move my lab to a bigger space? And I can't, I've never met anyone that's excited about moving their laboratory. Um, I don't know and, how uh, people do it. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's usually a lot of stress is from what we see. So, yeah, that way we can um, help them maximize that space. And then they still have that control, right? Because they're really just hiring a team of designers at our design center. Yeah, I find that really a nice aspect I didn't realize. I figured 350 and when you sent it in, some random person got your design that day. Yeah, and that's where a lot of people think that, right? And yeah, that's definitely not the case. And that's how we, we sort of made our name. And when we entered into it, that's what we were hearing. Hearing the most is just the inconsistency in design. And we just thought, how, how can we solve that problem? And just the easiest way to do that was give people the same technicians each time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though we are a dental lab podcast, are mm -hmm. you guys doing designs for dentists directly? Yeah, so we do design for everyone. You know, we don't say no, we're not going to design for dentists. And, and that is another trend that we're seeing is that a lot of clinicians are buying printers and doing a bit of chair side their work as well. So, you know, for a laboratory, it's, I don't think it's time you can really put your head in the sand and hope that it doesn't come. I think it's going to impact every sort of business mm -hmm. out there. Um, and that's where labs um, need to consider, well, not consider, but they look at how they can add value to their customers, right? So, Trends that touching back on the trends, a trend that you see a lot, um, so increase is same day all on fours. And so, do labs start offering a design service for their flare clinicians who want to print in a house, or uh, can they go chairside more often to help them with these these complex cases? Because it is definitely an evolving industry. Because these three D printers are good uh, and they're yeah. very affordable. Um, and so, you know, I think that will be a trend that keeps going. What do you see in Dennis sent to you for design more? Do you work with Sarek and do the same day? We aren't offering Sarek right now. Uh, we, we don't do that. Hope to do it at some point in the future. But where you'll see clinicians is, is a lot of wax ups, actually. Um, case presentation tools. Um, oh, so yeah. Use those to actually close the patient. So we'll see a lot of wax ups come to us um, and then they'll print them, present them, and then typically use a lab for the final fabrication of that. Uh, then all on fours are growing a bit as well. So they'll do the temporary PMMA. Oh, sorry, they'll, they'll do the temporary and then they'll uh, once again use a lab for the final. So you offer a service that during surgery you can finalize the temporary and then they can print it all while the patient's still there or is it not move that quick? It can move that quick, yep. Really? So we've, wow. Yeah, we've done that for both labs and, and dentists. So, yeah, there's a pre-booking option for, uh, for both labs and dentists. So we're seeing that that trend grow quite a bit, actually. There's a lot of interest in that from, from both dentists and, and labs. Are you requiring photogrammetry? Uh, yep, yeah, we work with uh, photogrammetry, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah and obviously there's a few different systems out there, but yep, yeah, uh, whatever really we're requested to do, we'll go and do that for them. Do you require photogrammetry, I guess should be the question, because I'd be a little weary doing a, a design off of anything else, but I think you have to have photogrammetry, don't you? I'll have to check with our designers, actually. I'll, I'll double check with them exactly, but yeah. um, before, before I go on that one, but... I believe there's a few different systems out there, right? So sure. I don't think we can photogram it through every case. Yeah, that's great. So what else is Evident working on in the near future? 
what are you guys planning on bringing out? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. And so, you know, obviously design is, is such an integral part of, of the dental lab but, and, and going, going digital has made labs so much more efficient. But what we're seeing is that, you know, the, the sufficiency is creating new roles in the lab, which is actually very inefficient. Um, so, for example, a lot of people now will just have to employ uh, staff just to transfer files around the lab, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very expensive uh, administration task. So where, where we're look at the products which we expect to come out pretty soon is what we're sort of calling an iOS scraper. So we have um, integrations with the iOS companies to funnel those, funnel those uh, scans directly into your lab management software or into a, a destination of your choice to sort of eliminate that need to consistently check the different portals because you might yeah. have seven or eight if you're a larger lab and some people have five or six people just doing that all day. So we're having uh, building automations to, to solve that problem um, for our partners. And that then, is huge if you can yeah. pull that off. <laughs> yeah, so we're currently testing it right now with about 15 or, or 20 labs or so. Um, and then off, off the back of that, you know, we're literally looking to, to solve, help our labs in this tight labor market, right? And so it's really about delivering touchless workflows. And so, you know, if that scans there, it's all online. So they can actually funnel those scans directly to Evident or we'll design them. And then we can do, we do build ready plates um, for them to print, say their models and so on. So the first time they're sort of touching that case is when they're ready to actually start manufacturing it as well. So it's about building these end-to-end workflows to make it as touchless as possible, which really helps them improve their efficiency, but essentially profitability at the end of the day. So that's, uh, those are the two kind of... Uh, ideas in, in the oven which we're going to be releasing pretty soon so it comes back to a lab nested yep ready yep. to go that's yeah. amazing yes yeah, so we've got partnerships with the Sega, carbon form labs accurator and, and everyone like that we're sure. right a lot of that nesting for them that's pretty neat yeah so let me ask you if you know of any person out there that uses your services and then outsources the manufacturing and basically, they just don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what? if this is a viable business. <laughs> you know what? Like, it, the matter, I've had a lot of conversations where a lot of people would just say, if I was going to start a lab these days, I'd just kind of open up a shop window and then just send the design to you guys and then use someone, use a milling center or yeah. someone else to produce it and then just ship it out, um, put your packaging on it. Because there are so many options now, right? Um, yeah. You've got the great guys down there at Argon, which do a lot of this outsourced milling and, and someone else designing. Sure. I mean, you can really send it anywhere. Um, someone's going to do it for you, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's none that I know of off the top of my head, but I bet, I bet there is somewhere. I bet there is too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're driving a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about the ExoCAD because I know that's relatively new. Every ExoCAD that people have, they don't have to do anything. It's already included. Yeah, so in North America, so as long as you've got Dental Share um, on there. Um, what is Dental Share? Is that their version of... It's their, yeah, essentially their version of transferring files or con- okay. connecting with your partners. So it's really a, a FTP sort of system, um, file transfer system. And so you can connect with, pre- previously you could build your own network and you still can where you connect with a design partner or you connect with a milling center to send those files. Uh, but essentially we've worked together and we're looking at ways that we can streamline the process and so as part of our partnership uh exacad have basically en- enabled an extension in there which has just the evident logo you just click on that if you're an existing customer of evidence it, it sort of synchronizes in the background and, awesome. and you just send the case off or if you're if you're a new customer and never used our services you just fill in a quick a quick form and uh then you've got create an account and then the case will be back to you in 24 hours is that how long it takes 24 hours on the first case, typically, uh, 24 hours is what we would advertise. But I think uh, looking at some data the other day of our average turnaround time over the last year or so, it's about 10 hours um, in most cases uh, are coming back. Wow. Have you seen an explosion of ExoCAD cases since your partnership? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and the explosion it just made it so easy, right? Um, and anything you can do to make someone's life easier, they're typically going to knee jerk to that when the stress is on or the pressure's on. And so, absolutely, we've seen an explosion in exocade cases, and luckily, we're, we're obviously we're prepared for that as well as 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 we sort of built up to the re- release date. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, guy, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Thank you so much for having me. Like I said, it's a it's great to finally be on here, and uh, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate everything that you and Evident does, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, maybe someday we'll run into each other. <laughs> no doubt we will. So yeah, thank you once again, and uh, I'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Guy. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you so much, Guy, for coming on the podcast and talking to Elvis about the services that Evident has to offer. I'm really sorry that I couldn't be at the recording because I know how useful a good design company can help a lab grow and scale. Like I really do because 40 a day, that's pretty spectacular. But I certainly learned a lot about Evident listening to your conversation. I really think it's important that they give a lab a dedicated team to work on their cases, and I think that spells consistency. If you want to learn more, head over to evidentdigital.com for the design services and evidentlabs.com if you want to know more about their lab management software. Thank you again, Guy. All right, everyone. We are heading off to the triathlon. Yes. Wish us luck. We are. You don't need uh, luck. You got this. I need fucking luck, man. You need luck. I just need I just need to show up. <laughs> no, you don't. You're awesome though, and so is your team. I think Bobby needs luck, just saying. Hopefully Yeah, we got this. Speedo. <laughs> we got this. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye guys. Bye. circle 62 times <laughs> that's how i feel about f-ing swimming